All right, welcome back. Uh, you're still on to the polity, reaching you live from Abuja. I'm still in the studio with Tijani Ahmad Tajuddin to speak on that issue right there. All right, that was uh, Mr. Um, Ajuri speaking on, um, you know, just getting in touch with Nigerians. He did promise while he assumed office uh, after his appointment that um, communications will be different now with a more human face and that um, in the past, uh, it seems as though spokespersons were antagonistic towards Nigerians. But that being said, what do you make of um, the announcements there and, you know, uh, the messages from the president? Well, as Mr. Alju Angale has just, he has spoken about the issue surrounding the petroleum industry as of now. Mr. Ajuru, as the spokesperson to the president, I have utmost respect for him and his statement on his all right. Well, uh, the thing that he is trying to clarify, he, and he has assured Nigerians that it should, will not be business as usual where Nigerians have been hiding certain information that they deserve to know what is actually going on. And as he has said, the after the, the regulation, the Nigeria before it was spending or it was consuming average of 67 million liters, 67,000 million liters per day, while now it has drastically reduced to 40 something average of a million. Well, that we can say mostly the issue that has been surrounded, however, is the issue of smuggling to our neighboring countries, which is unfortunate. It has been happening and the government decided it cannot be able to curtail it. I think this is a lapse between the government security agencies that are saddled with responsibility to protect the territorial integrity of our nation, not only in terms of any attack, but even taking our petroleum motor spirit outside the country is an economic sabotage. On the issue of petrol, there is no basic whatsoever that Nigeria cannot be able to refine what it can be, what it can consume. There is no justification any government, the subsequent government that came, all government has failed drastically in this sector. Well, it is unfortunate that we are the ones who, who have the crude oil, who have the natural resources in our domain, while we cannot be able to refine it till we take it to other country, even though the government, the previous government has promised that this Tangotero Padre can cushion the effect, it has the ability to be able to do, we have seen it, but it has all become not a success story, to, if you look at what is going on. And you know, Nigerians are not finding it easy to come to the public domain, the president, if I caught him right, he is speaking on behalf of the, of the president. The president has assured Nigerians that there will not be increase in the pump price. Well, it's not an issue of the president has been assured. You, the government, decided to come out and tell now they are not in control of the price. It is now the market forces, the market forces that will determine the what an average Nigeria can be able, or all Nigerians can be able to buy fuel in the market. And now you are trying to tell us that the government has assured the Nigerian populace, the government has assured Nigerian public that there will not be increment. Mm. So it is, for me, I am seeing it as a contradicting statement mm. when you say that it is the market price that will determine what Nigerians can be able to buy this fuel. And now you are trying to say that the uh, Labour Congress will shift their sword in of intending to go on total uh, indefinite strike. The poor price will remain where it is. And you are telling Nigerians that this is the cheapest in the country, in West African South region. Nigerians cannot be able to undertake and comprehend the statement that the presidency has made. Because in real circumstances, look at our minimum wage. Look at the people that are benefiting. Before they were saying the story that it is only few people that are benefiting from this poor subsidy mm -hmm. issue. And now Nigerians decided that a lot of people, if you look at the social media, people are saying that, well, we understand that we too we are benefiting that this should be, the, the poor subsidy should come back. Yeah. It is not a matter of 
uh, has said earlier, the government has spoken that there are sacrifices that Nigerians should make for our country to progress. Well, I agree with that. But if you said that Nigerians should sacrifice certain aspects of their normal life, the, especially the issue of falsehood, what parameters, what the government has done or is trying to do to cushion the effect of the removal of falsehood, I think it has done nothing. We cannot see anything that government is trying to do to illuminate the suffering. Mm -hmm. If you look at the issue of this petroleum motor spill, people are mostly using especially petroleum, the gas sector, the gas that mostly our trucks have been using has been deregularized since most people decided to look other way around. But now the issue of if you go to, to the city of Abuja, you will see the number of buses, the number of cars has dramatically reduced. While in some instances, some offices decided to reschedule the working the working time. Yeah. Some people are trying to say, some offices say that you should come three times in, in, a, in a week. While on that regard, it is reducing the workforce and there will be no production. Without production, the economy of the country will go down. And you, if you look at the prices of commodities, everything has carricated, everything has got, has got up. So what government has done what we expect the spokesperson to the president to tell Nigerians what government is trying to do or what has government done trying to cushion the effect of this subsidy removal. I have given a long term solution that uh, railway is one of the cheapest way, is one of the way that government should try to invest much so that we have enough infrastructure that can contain the issue of forest subsidy removal, even though there are some some technicalities, there are some terms, there are, are things that government should do of immediate so that an average Nigerian can feel that yes, the government said that we should sacrifice. This sacrifice is not only from us, it is even the government has sacrificed certain things and the government let's have a mass transit so that at least people can be like me. If I am trying to go for my normal business, if there are this mass transit that can convey me to where I am expected to go or where I intend to go, I think there is no basis for me taking my car, pulling my car that will consume much fuel. You know, if you look at this kind of things, it's something that we should consider. Mm -hmm. So, the, for the government, what we are calling on the government, we have not said that Nigerians should not sacrifice. We agree that Nigerians should sacrifice. However, not only sacrifice, let government try to put policies in place, try to put things that are in place so that to mm -hmm. the, uh, to cushion the effect of this subsidy yeah. removal. All right, you know, um, when we speak about um, the palliatives or methods or policies to cushion the effect, um, some might wonder, could these palliatives end up just replacing subsidy and being as costly? Uh, but on the other hand, there is a um, word on the grapevine is that the president or the, the, the government is actually mulling or considering returning partial subsidy. <coughs> Uh, we saw that due to landing costs and all that, that it could be coming. And, and that's why when you said the, co the, the comment is, um, is control, pardon me, is um, contradictory. contradictory. Yes. Um, he says market forces will decide. And at the same time, he says, don't worry, it will not go higher. Not and people say that the reason it, the government is bringing that assurance is because they are actually planning to start paying partially again. Now, I'd just like to get your thoughts. Whether th uh, this comes to be... Do you think it's two steps forward, one steps backward, or is it that at the end of the day, after all said and done, after looking east, west, north, and south, perhaps subsidy is actually necessary and we can't do without it? Or well, if the government said that it is trying to bring, is it trying to say that it's trying to bring back subsidy? Uh, it partially. hasn't officially said it's it. It's not officially said. Uh, Why it is trying to maneuver out. it was that it is trying to see something that it will ensure that it eliminates the suffering. You know, Nigerians have already been tired. They are unhappy with the government. With the government that is basically four months or three months, per, per se, I can say from now, mm -hmm. while the average Nigerian is finding it difficult to put food in his table, to have three square daily meals. Everything, as I said earlier, everything, the price of almost all commodities has skyrocketed. So, what can government try to do? 
Nigerians, we don't care what ways government is trying to do, but what Nigerians are after is to see that their lives is being eased. Their life is being abnormal. Where they are before the mobile of subsidy, how can the government, what government is trying to do to see that it cushions the effort of this removal of subsidy and the government say that it is trying to do even it is say otherwise it has not come clearly or directly to say that it will partially bring back the issue of subsidy we should look at it what caused the issue of this subsidy something that is the landing cost uh, you you understand is something that you have in your abundance at your in your country and you are taking it somewhere to be refined what government is trying to do is what nigerians are after to bring a lasting solution to this debacle of subsidy issue especially in terms of premium motor speed that is petrol that we almost consume almost every day so we are trying to what government is trying to put in place that will bring a lasting solution to this issue it is something that seems 1999 we have been hearing the issue of subsidy 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 and it is only few people that are benefiting from it so are we not are we trying to tell the world that we are not capable of refining our oil in our crude oil in nigeria this is clearly sending a bad signal to uh, the most populous nation in the continent the most populous nation in the west africa this is a bad signal this is not inconsistent with what we expect if we are really trying to progress as a nation we should at least bring policies that will make nigerians be happy you should not we are not we do not vote for this government to inflict suffering to other nigerians we expect it when it comes it will try to reduce the suffering it will try to make things averagely all nigerians should not be sad Nigerians should be happy, things should be going smoothly. Let's say we have a good road network system, our our healthcare system is functioning, all our, our rail line is functioning. This is what we said the deficit of the we have in the infrastructure. How can we be able to progress as a nation? The deficit, how can we bridge that that those gaps? We should we are tired of seeing our leaders just siphoning after tenure of each governor or tenure of each regime you will see that they are being uh, witch hunt or they are not the witch hunt they are being there are several allegations on issue of corruption so what can we do as a country to curtail this corruption what can we do we, we do as a nation to see that corruption in almost all facets that is going on in the country has been drastically reduced or has been totally eliminated so that our country can move but we are tired of the policies that are not working we want a government that is working we want especially es immediately when these ministers have started have started working to see that things have been proper in shape we don't expect we do not want this government to see failure we expect this government to when it comes when it has it is already on board we expect the government to see that things are going smoothly things are going the way it's supposed to be as an Nigerian. so we cannot take any excuse we expect that when this government is living after it four or eight years it, it depends on what nigerians decided to do to see that at least where we are today we have moved forward we expect that when another administration come at least we should be moving so that the way we see western world is being developed we want to see the african continent we want to see our country nigeria has been developed in such a way that it will be envy of other countries we expect that people from other countries to be envying Nigeria to see that they are coming to invest to see that Nigeria is a peaceful country to see that the presidency has done what is expected to do the president Aswaju Bolatnibu as we hope that his administration will be for the betterment of our country for the betterment of the people of Nigeria to see that things have gone the way it is expected to be not the other way around because Nigeria will not forgive whoever comes and decided to be stagnant or to retard us backward we want to progress as a nation all right um, that's fair enough um uh I, you know i think one of the things we see about um the essay media publicity even from the past is that they always try to paint a good picture and um which you can't really blame them for i guess they are meant to be 
uh, very positive in their outlook uh, so as not to discourage Nigerians from dreaming and having hopes. But um, speaking about, um, you know, you know, trying to balance this, we see that marketers are also saying that the floating of the Naira is also affecting uh, issues. Um, even um, away from just day-to-day um, uh, -day fuel and all that, we even have that um, uh, in the education sector is also affecting. Just some moments ago, TED Fund uh, said that the floating of the Naira has also affected its foreign um, exchange or, or foreign um, sponsorship of students uh, going abroad. So that being said, what do you also think about that? Uh, we, there's a particular interview by President Muhammadu Buhari, the former president, where he gave his reasons for not doing this particular thing, floating the Naira, allowing it to be free. Uh, he said that uh, for a country that is not producing enough or exporting enough, we have to defend the Naira. Uh, clearly, what we are seeing now is that President Tinubu and President Buhari have very different ways as to how they think the country should go. And that's what we're seeing now. But that being said, what do you think, uh, how, how do you think this could uh, turn out for Nigerians out there, the way uh, the fluctuations are going? Do you also see a reversal? Do you see the, the government also taking a step back and seeing that perhaps we're not ready for some of these policies? You know, it is not rocket science. It is something that is physical. Whatever you are not the one who is producing it, definitely it will be certain factors that will determine it. We Nigerians, we don't have the dollar unless when we sell our crude oil or certain commodities, our natural resources to the world market that we can be able to have the dollar in our domain so that for us to do our normal day-to-day -day activities. Yes, I had that I, and I read also that Ted Pond said that it cannot be able to give its grant for foreign scholarship or it has to suspend certain of its policies because it cannot be able to withstand the project on the on the nether. You know, what we are expecting to do as a country, we should be innovative. What can we do as Nigerians to see that we are not depending on any country's currency? What can we do as a nation to see that we are not major importers while we are exporters? We are expected to be exporting certain things. And what innovative have we done in our country to see that other countries are coming to take our good, not only in terms of in terms of the natural resources, how can we refine it in our country? Uh, so, sorry to cut you short, but how long, what's the timeline do you think this uh, is on this, trying to become an exporting nation, trying to become a producing nation? It depends on the political, it depends within, on the political will. What political will do we have? What, what parameters has our leaders have in, in place so that things will be as expected? what innovation we are trying to implement so uh, what blueprint as our country put in place so that when any government so, so it will not deviate from the actual plan what we are trying to do you cannot say look at whatever you are trying to plan you have to plan it in a good foundation if the foundation is not good definitely the superstructure will definitely collapse so what foundation have we as an Nigerians, what the government is trying to put in place so that our country sh can be next net exporter, not net importer of almost everything. Basically, everything we are using in this country is being imported from other countries. This well, is not so our economy. Do, do, do you think um, President Tinubu's hands, or will I say his mouth, is tied? You know, because he's taking over from a government which he also supported. And um, it's making it a bit difficult for him to uh, explain what the situation on ground is without also indicting uh, himself. You know, himself, right? you think maybe things are a bit more difficult? Because one thing we noticed about President Buhari's tenure was um, he could easily very he could very easily say, "Well, 
16 years of PDP. Mm -hmm. The PDP did it. The PDP did it. It was the PDP's fault. So now, oh, no, you, know, now you are trying to tell so me that Tinubu is a big mess. He is, you know, uh, he cannot be able to complain. It yeah, is this his government. Yeah, this that out to it be. is APC government that just left after spending eight years. And now he has nobody to blame. So I'm wondering, you think things are a bit more difficult for him? We saw just them. Perhaps today or yesterday, um, the um, senator, senator, former APC national chairman, governor, mm. um, Adam Zoshomole, saying that uh, what the president, the president met a very uh, precarious situation on ground. And then we saw recently the CBN report, which unveiled a lot of rev revelations mm -hmm. where the CBN governor borrowed trillions that people were unaware of. And so on and so forth. These things have put us in a very you see tight that, spot. Uh, Comrade Adams Oshimola, the distinguished senator, has is part and parcel of the previous government. They are the one who campaigned from all over the country, every nook and cranny of this country, to install the previous government. And he is, has uh, his hand in bringing this government to power. So, what about to blame the previous government? I am looking at not expected i don't want to call him any bad name but what do we expect that those people that govern the previous government they are the same people that are here but the issue of blame game does not ar arise however we expect that average nigeria is result oriented that we want we need to result we don't want any the issue of blame game blaming the 16 years of pdp and eight years of president Muhammad buhari that has just left cannot solve any issue but what we are expecting that this government has come what we expected the government to do is trying to start working from day one to see that nigeria is in the right track to see that nigeria the the expectation of nigerians has been met in such a way that things are put in a right perspective we should not expect any blame game to work and to say that Bola Ahmed Tinibu is looking at it in such in a situation whereby he cannot blame the previous government he is part and parcel of the previous government and what about he is a senior citizen of the country and he has, has had impact he is, has played major role in bringing the previous government to oh, power. Oh, 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 let's let's um, take away blame game uh, uh, we're not talking about blame game now let's talk about how it hinders his own success. I, I say this now because if the president uh, decides to start to recover stolen monies, corruption, and so on and so forth, it might end up affecting people he has once you know, campaigned for and so on and so forth. Do, how do you think he should handle this going well, forward? As an average Nigerian, as Nigerian, I don't expect him a president to look other way around. Once ever he has understand that there is misappropriation of funds from the previous government, whoever is being indicted should be brought to book. Nigeria will not forgive him if he decides to look all the way out. Even uh, the people that he campaigns to them, with them together that they have him to be in power to look all the way out. He has sway with the he has sway to Almighty God that he will be unbiased to every Nigeria. All Nigeria is considered. Now, the issue of campaign is over. Now, he is a president of all Nigerians. So, despite the fact that there are issues surrounding the government, there are so many challenges, but we don't expect the president to look the other way than an issue of corruption. Whoever has been found in decade, whoever has been found wanting should be brought to book. The constitution is very clear, it's explicitly clear that nobody should be allowed to just go scot free. If he decided to look all the way out, Nigeria will not forgive him. Nigeria will never forgive anybody, anybody, I repeat, anybody from the security agencies and way back to the president that decided to look all the way out on the issue of corruption. If we do not term this correction, if we do not bring this correction to it, it will bring Nigeria to its knee. While if we really want to progress as a nation, we must fight corruption. And everybody has a role to play. The security agencies, the average, the average Nigerian, the general population, me and you, we have a role to play in trying to see this country has succeeded. And this country cannot succeed if we look at the way around that some people should change the nation and they are allowed to go scot free without being punished it was only when people that decided to strengthen the nation that are being brought to book then it will serve a detriment to others whoever is trying to decide to short change the nation is trying to do something otherwise then he will be afraid that it has not ended well with so 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 person it's had not always so 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 group of people th that decided to short change the nation while it is 
a solid foundation it is when he decided to be fair to everybody then we can progress as a nation while if he decided to look other way around that the country will be and it did and we will not progress where we are expected to be where the where we want to be as a nation to progress we cannot our progression will be stagnant so we want to move forward as a nation whoever is found wanting should be punished according to the law of the land the constitution is explicitly clear on every issue so the judiciary is there the legislature is there and the executive arm of government is there if all these three arms of government are functioning effectively i doubt if we will have problem as a nation and if things are formulated if things are put in the right perspective we will progress and, and this is what me and you are hoping to see uh, that this country has progressed we are moving from where we are at least to certain so that our the unborn generation will be proud of we have a country as a Nigeria and we do not have any country than Nigeria so we have to yeah. come together and celebrate our country and move forward so that at least we will be proud of our country. All right speaking about people who should be brought to book for whatever crimes they've committed allegedly or otherwise uh, the CBN governor suspended CBN governor Godwin MFLA uh, you saw the, the reports there the case yes, I have seen about the um, firearms is being withdrawn, while about 20 charges, if I'm correct, are said to be filed or if not already filed against the CBN governor. What do you make of this whole situation? And also someone else who is under the, what I say, investigation or watch of the president, Abdul, uh, Abdul, Abdul Rashid Bawa, uh, who has been in custody for uh, about two months plus now, and we don't know what's going on. What do you make of those situations? Do you think they are sending the message that you said the government should be sending? Well, the message we expect the government to send that it should be a respecter of the rule of law. It is the law that governs the nation that brought this government to power. So whatever the government is trying to do, we expect the government to be within the ambit of the law so that it should not be debate. The signal that we expect this government to send to the Nigerians is an, a government that respects the rule of law. I have seen that previously uh, the suspended CBN governor Godwin Emepele was being alleged to have been committed a crime against the nation, against the, his country, the issue of firearms. And later on, the government decided to withdraw the allegation and file separate charges against him. While I have seen it like the government is trying to buy time that was why it decided to, to suspend him and also to charge him with issue of firearm and now it has perhaps concluded its investigation then it decided to pile certain charges different charges against him that he has committed to the to the state what we expect as an average nigerian we expect that the government should be sending a good signal on the issue of Bawa. He has been held. So if his if his suspension and also detention is within the habit of, of the law, I am okay with it. But for other anything otherwise that contradict the law of the land, I am not in support of it. Whatever government has any allegation against certain individual, he should be sanction and also file a case in court so that the court is the one who will determine whether this person is has violated any rule or he is the court can be can decide to send him free so the message we expect the government should send to nigerians let the message be of a respecter of a rule of law so that we should not at his at all started we don't expect the government to do otherwise we don't expect the government to send bad message bad signal to any government that is coming so that at least we should respect the rule of law if any individual of the country is found what is alleged to have committed certain crime against the country they are presiduous the constitution is very clear what government should do in order to brought 
that person to book without fear or fable to anybody whoever is a senior citizen of the country or whoever decided to do otherwise there are procedures that are laid down in the constitution so i expect the government to follow the law of law to follow the constitution what constitution has said the allegations against mfla mfla has already the suspended cbn governor has already has his lawyers in place so that so now it is the the court that would decide if he has anything that he is not satisfied with then his lawyers can depend him his lawyer can depend him within the ambit of the law and what i call on the government whatever the decision government should not try to interfere in the appearance of the court so that allow the judiciary to function optimally so that the message should be this government is a respecter of the rule of law this government has decided to allow each of the arm of government to function optimally this is what we expect this is what we call democracy we expect that government should do what is right and anything contrary to that nigerians are against it nigerians are not in support of what government trying to do anything contrary to the what the constitution has said all right that's fair enough um one of the things the government keeps asking for is patience so I'd like to end on this note in terms of um, the exchange rate and um, all these other issues that we're seeing. Uh, how much patience do you think Nigerians should exhibit? And when do you think that they can begin to say, well, at this point, I don't know if things are going to get any better. Perhaps it's time to try something different or, or whatever. We know the issues are plenty. We know they are, they are serious and they are drastic. What do you think Nigerians can begin to see that will make them be patient without having to be told again and again that it should be i think i think when the previous government all that in its eight years it has been telling nigerians to be patient though nigerians should not be pushed to the wall so that when nigerians are pushed to the wall i think the outcome will not be will not be it will be catastrophic we don't pray for that we want to live in a peaceful country so whatever government decide to do in the less the government the image makers of the government that is the spokesperson of the government it should be clearly telling nigerians this is what we are this is our plan this is what we are trying to do this is what we are doing in order to see that things are put in a right perspective in order to see things are moving the way they are expected to be perhaps the government is not intended with the re reality what people are supposed if you go to the villages if you go to uh, all over the country people are crying off that there are this hardship in the land things are not been easy and it is obvious the price of almost everything has skyrocketed the average Nigerian is finding it very difficult to cope with the present situation at hand so for the government to continue telling Nigerians to be patient 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 Nigerians should be patient till when when are we expecting things to go right when are we expecting people things to go we as we voted for this government to see the result we do not expect we do not vote for this government to come and tell us that we should be patient we should be patient no it's not a we need a result oriented project to manifest in our country we need things to be in a right perspective so telling nigerians to be patient there are this limit for how pay for how long we will be patient enough to endure the suppression of the country but we don't expect that let government come out clearly and inform nigerians these are the policies we have put in place these are the things we are trying to do these are the things we have done to see that average nigerian is enjoying the fruit of his country in enjoying things that are we have voted for this government to see the result we are we are expecting that to see changes as from day one we expect things to be normal in this country the issue of insecurity should be that secondly the, the unfortunate incident of yesterday that happens in niger state issue it is uncalled for we do not expect that our soldiers to be just masquerade without any consequences the government should investigate what has caused that issue why these bandits are having a field day trying to instigate insecurity trying to permit trouble in almost every nook and cranny of the country we have problem in the niger delta we have problem in the northeast we have problem in the south south is the issue of ipop you see we need nigerian government to 
start action. We need Nigerian government to see that how things are being emulated, how this country is, is secured so that investors can come in and promote our good so that our country will be better because nobody will invest his resources in a country that is not square. The insecurity is one of the major factors that is retarding this country. We need a government that will put things in place. We need a government that will try to see things are put in a right perspective. We need a government to see that our security agencies are optimally functioning. Our security agencies are being provided with what they are all needed so that they can function optimally to square this country against any external or internal aggression. We need this country to work. We, we have voted this government to see the result. So anything contrary to that is unacceptable. Anything contrary to this will not be taken by Nigeria. We will not take it and we will not allow it to continue. We are calling on the government to work up, to work up from any slumber it has. We want to see the result in almost every aspect. We need this country to move forward as in a, so that at least our country will be safe. Investment will come. Things are put our farmers will be able to go back to farm and cultivate more than and to see that how can government help our farmers with fertilizer so that things will go we, if not to give it properly we don't expect government to give it for but in a cheaper price so that we can afford it so that our farmers will go to farm and cultivate land the food price will drastically crash will reduce because any country they cannot be able to feed itself we are in trouble we should not continue depending on any foreign intervention. We should at least stand on our feet as a country so that we will be major exporter of anything God has endowed our country with. All right, that's fair enough. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Uh, Tijani Tajuddin Ahmad. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you so much. Thank you, my brother. All right, that's all we take on this segment of the program. We'll go on a short break when we return. The policy reaches you once again from Abuja. We'll be right back. <laughs>